welcome back to my channel. I hope you are all doing well. I have got a brand new mold and I'm excited about it. I'm continuing on with the piped jasmine eye as you saw in the last video. I'll link it here and above. In today's video, we are going sheep and lemons. Random, but that's what we're doing. Let's go. <laughs> going to post two videos one on sheep one on lemons but they were so short I couldn't so I've combined them into the one this is the brand new coaster set I've got from Amazon I have linked it below now I was particularly worried about the holder because as soft as it is it's quite soft I was still worried about demold so I was keeping everything crossed that it wouldn't snap when I demolded it and yeah this is voiceover clear, so it all it all turned out okay. It was fine. I'm going to be using Jesmonite branded pigments throughout both of these um, sets. So in the first lot, I'm going with the white for the sheep. Now, again, these are layered pieces. So I'm doing the white body of the sheep first. And I was trying to work out a way that would give me a round, bobbly... Um, shape you know I didn't want a round circle now jesmonite does not self level like epoxy resin so I have got a little bit of luxury here I know that it's not just going to turn into a complete circle but I still wanted some defined bubbles if that makes sense I wanted I wanted them to look like bobbly sheep so the best method for me was to create a series of circles a series of blobs with the jesmonite going around in a circle and then just back filling the center I figured this would keep the outside of the shape more bobbly you can see top right here that I'm working on I didn't do it really that way so it kind of did all meld into a yeah a shape I didn't really love whereas the other three have got those defined bobbles very cloud shape that is the method I used and I did the same on the bottom of the holder as well so like when you've taken all the coasters out you can still see that design at the bottom of the holder I thought that would look quite cute and that is what I did I just went around until I was really happy with all of the shapes again I had leftovers so I've put some into a trivet tray I also put some into a trinket tray but I ended up not using that so for the gray I've just used some black pigment little tiny bits of black you don't want to go too much just use a cocktail stick or a toothpick and build it up until you're happy with the gray that you've got I'm using the piping bottle again and I'm just piping these cute little legs they're so cute oh my gosh they were actually too adorable and again I was worried about the legs joining together so I was trying to leave a gap between the legs so that they didn't just blend together and become one blob and then I went in with the faces and yeah I just created these little blobs again it's all blobby very blobby work here today <laughs> but and then I put a little ear on each of the sheep's faces I did actually off camera give them all a tail as well so you'll see later on in the video they they end up with a tail and if you're thinking where did that come from that's because I added it off camera but this is the trinket tray I ended up not using that so to backfill I'm going with a paler shade of grey only two shades of grey in this video and I'm going with a paler shade I ended up adding a little bit more white to make it paler and yeah very very bubbly at this point I'm trying to work fast because I've poured a lot but what I thought I'd do differently this time is use my brush to brush around the edge of the sheep if you watched my toadstool video you'll know that I got little air pockets around the edges of the toadstool where I filled it up and yeah it just left gaps I didn't want that so I'm using my brush to make sure that the edges are sealed together in the same layer does that <laughs> yeah I, yeah I'm just using my brush I'm basically using my brush to make sure that I don't get air pockets is where I was going with this so after I've done that then I carry on and just fill up the molds quite quickly because again you've got around about a five minute work time with this so even as I was brushing I was very conscious so I was like come on Claire do this quicker do this quicker um without trying to cause even more air bubbles because deep down you're always panicking 
Again, you don't want to tap these two kind of crazy because you've already got those sheep in there. I left the sheep to cure and go hard for around about 20 minutes before I filled the back on. So you can't really pick them up and tap them like crazy at this point. So I went in with my the end of a paintbrush and I actually then went in with a cocktail stick as well just to double check that those edges weren't going to get any air bubbles. And a really light, light tap as well because really you can't do much at this point I don't want to dislodge those sheep if this is the first time you're watching me because those sheep have cured and set to the silicon any little movement could dislodge them and then the back color would seep underneath the sheep and I am not about the sanding life it's not my cup of tea not my bag so anything I can do to avoid that I am up for that <laughs> so here we are this is 30 minutes later actually the no this is 40 minutes later I left them a bit longer because I was worried about the holder but how cute is it oh my gosh how cute is it I'm loving the fact that there's a sweat line around the the face and the legs of the sheep which gives it this defined line now this one I did notice had other sweat marks these are the sweat marks we want to avoid at all costs because they are not repairable as far as I know they're not repairable and this is the trivet tragic tragic trivet that got a lot of sweat lines here not much I'm gonna be able to do about that so yeah it's a bit of a dud product I'm afraid really really gutted about it but this is the one that was getting my heart racing because I didn't know what it would do those edges there those corners oh my gosh that the struggle, it's not that the struggle was real. If this was epoxy resin, you could just rip that off of there quite happily, even though we still need to take care of our molds, people. I'm not saying rip your molds. But because this is Jesmini, I'm super conscious that those corners are going to snap, even though I've left it 40 minutes. I would definitely recommend leaving 40. But here we go. It came off. And yeah, I was super, super, super careful. And I was so, so happy it didn't snap. I was so, so happy. And how dreamy is this? As a set, these coasters just fit inside so, so perfectly. And I knew at this point I wanted to make more with the set. So I carried on to do more. We're also going to talk about how we seal these at the end of the video. So here is my drying rack. This is a cake drying rack. It is linked below in Amazon. And that is what I use for all of my Jesmini. As soon as I've made it and sanded it, I sand immediately. As soon as I've done that, they go straight on the drying rack for 24 hours before sealing. Okay lemons we are going bright bright lemons again this is going to be a separate video but really I just couldn't put out really short videos like that and yeah thank you to you lovelies who said last week my videos my videos could be longer so that kind of allowed me to make a longer video how do you draw lemons I mean <laughs> I struggled a little bit with the lemons and it's crazy because these are even easier than the sheep they're just one thing like as soon as you've poured the lemons they cure you can fill them up but yeah I was kind of going back and forth with the lemons and at one point it was so bad I had to just get a tissue and scoop it out and try again and yeah but I think they look quite lemony and you know some of the lemons I end up buying are quite bobbly as well so I kind of allowed it <laughs> I gave myself permission to not worry too much about the shape of the lemons as long as they look lemon-esque then then we're good we've, we've kind of got a lemon-esque theme going on so there you go there you see me going in with the tissue I was like no we cannot have an extra head sitting on the lemon <laughs> so there you go I ended up doing exactly the same to the base of the holder because same same reason I want I want the bottom of the holder to be just as pretty as the coasters. Gave them a little bit of a shake and a tap at this point and I still had so much yellow. You know, when I mix these bottles, I'm really only mixing about eight grams, 10 grams of liquid to powder. And honestly, it's still too much. So I'm still learning on how much I need for piping. So the back is gonna be this lime, beautiful zesty lime color. This is majority yellow to maybe a little bit of blue. So I would say, Three drops yellow to one drop blue gives you a nice lime and then you can add more blue if you want it to be a darker green kind of thing. So I didn't make enough because I just didn't make enough. I don't know why because there's no excuses. I had to mix up another batch and go in with a second layer which ended up um, kind of over pouring them. They didn't spill out of course they, they were still filled up. They just filled right up to the top. The difficulty here is that because that holder is 
pretty much perfect for the four. If you overfill like you can see here, I've overfilled. They're domed now. Again, not coming out the edges, it's fine. Um, they're domed. And actually these are perfect for me because I didn't have to sand them. But it means that they now protrude out of the top of the holder. So all of these little things we're learning together if you do have this mould. For the orange, it is the standard red and yellow. Even when I was pouring this, I could see lumps. I knew, I knew I had not mixed it thoroughly. So again, don't do like me. Don't be like me. Do it properly and uh, mix properly because we can see the results. We can see the consequences of not mixing your jesmonite properly are visible in that orange holder. And we'll talk about that when we demold. And yeah, I think they're cute. I mean, I like them. They are zesty. They are definitely they are definitely uh, lemons, but they also remind me of dragon eyes because <laughs> there's no, if there was a sweat line, I think I'd be happier if there was a sweat line around the lemons because it would have defined them more as lemons. Yeah. Or some graphic detail of some kind. Again, they're bright, they're colourful, they're super, super zesty and I still like them. I definitely do not hate them. If I did, I would not have put it in the video. <laughs> but here you go. Definitely the best way to demold these holders is to work from the back. So pull it up from the back towards the front and then ease it over those edges. And yeah, they fit beautifully. I love the combination of the yellow, the green and the orange. It reminds me of, yeah, when I painted my kitchen, when I got my first place, I think I was 19, 20, I painted my kitchen in these colours because I was so into colour. Every room in my flat at the time had all different colours. So I was young. I was very young. Um, but yeah, here we go. Again, they fit beautifully. And when we get a close up of that, of that holder, if we do get a close up, do we? Yeah, there you go. You can kind of see it there. There's blobs and spots. That is because I didn't mix it properly. But this is the consequence of overfilling those coasters they pop out the top. Again, they still are in there. There's still a lip holding that top one in. So I wasn't too upset. We are using branded Jesmonite sealer in this video. So the first coat, you saw that little bottle that I had. The first coat of Jesmonite sealer, per the instructions, not me saying this, this is the instructions, needs to be diluted with water by 20%. So if you've got 100 grams of that, you need 20% of that 20 grams of that to be water and I've already pre-mixed mine in a little bottle and I just keep that for when I'm sealing not much point in me sealing this but the water that the sweat damage is a probably too much I probably won't be able to sell this I probably won't use it so I have to break it up somehow and use it here's the method I use I use cheap kitchen sponges I coat them in that diluted solution here you can see in the light there is an element of streak. We don't want streak. So what we do is kind of like a wax on, wax off method. I coat them in the diluted solution. I really coat them in the diluted solution. And then off camera, I have a dry sponge. And so once I have soaked them completely and rubbed them thoroughly in the diluted solution, I come in with the dry sponge. You can see here in the reflection, there's a few streaks. With the dry sponge, a really quick wipe, a quick, quick, quick wipe of the dry sponge takes those streaks away and jobs are good in. This one here, it starts to froth up a bit. The um, sealer starts to froth when you've played with it too much. So it's starting to froth up. But again, rub it in, rub it in, rub it in. Go in with a dry sponge, rub it off. But we're not rubbing it off. It's still on there. It's still soaked in. It's still doing its job as a sealer. So we're not removing the sealer when we use the dry sponge. We're just removing the streaks and the lines that have been created by the original wash. So here we are. I'm washing it all over with that diluted solution. And then once you've done that and you've got into all of the nooks and crannies, the sides, the edges, the tops, the bottoms, then go in with your dry sponge to take off any marks that you see. But Honestly, I don't even think I did it with the holders because I wasn't so fussed. It's not so noticeable on the edges. So the second coat, seconds, I'm talking within a minute later, you can second coat it. That needs to be neat, completely neat jesmonite. Same method again. I saturate the sponge. I rub them all over front and back and sides. And then I come in with a dry sponge to take off any of that pattern or the streaks that have been left by the sponge. And I promise you they are now 
they are waterproof not utterly watertight because again Jesmini AC100 is never utterly 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 waterproof but they're wipe cleanable that you can spill on them and they'll be absolutely fine so yeah I hope that's really helped wow I've done this whole voiceover without stopping very rare um don't all laugh because you know <laughs> But here they are. I absolutely love this mould. I love this mould. The coasters are a tad small. They take a basic mug. A lot of my mugs are big and chunky, so not suitable. But if you've got a standard, maybe a teacup or a household standard size mug, like a cricket sized mug, um, perfect. Absolutely perfect. They sit on there perfectly. I love the sheep. I love the sheep. Public declaration of love for these little sheepies. Oh my god, they're so cute. And thank you so much for your suggestions in the last video. I know some of you were suggesting things like sloths. And I, I just appreciate how much faith you've got in my ability. I need to develop some of that faith in my own ability. But at the moment, I'm really flat kind of graphic ability, you know? Sloth, I would love to achieve. But unfortunately, we cannot blend and things like that with Jesmonite. It's just, it's just not possible. But... Yeah, I hope you've loved them. I hope you've enjoyed as much as I have. And yeah, I really love the mould. Everything is linked below. Um, and that is all from me. I will see you all on Saturday. And at this moment in time, I'm planning on using all of the terrazzo that was left over from my crazy Jesmonite Splashy Splashes video. Um, I collected all of that up and created terrazzo. So hopefully that will be Saturday's video. I will see you all then and have an amazing rest of the week. Bye.